So make sure you know the difference between heat and temperature. Temperature reflects the random motions of particles in a substance. The more motion a substance has, the higher the temperature is going to be. While heat is the transfer of energy between two objects due to that temperature difference. They're going to keep transferring heat until they're at the same temperature. Make sure that you know that heat flows from a hot body to a cool body. There's two ways that you can transfer energy. Work, which is force times distance, and heat. We're going to be talking about heat. So the measurements of heat are calories and joules. Calories are represented CAL. And this isn't the food calorie. Food calories have a capital C. And those are 1,000 regular calories. And then joules is J. Make sure you know that one calorie is equal to 4.184 joules. Make sure you know the conversion. So to convert 53.8 calories to joules, you're going to start with what you're given. Just like before, what's given is on the bottom. To cancel the unit, what you're looking for is on top. And then we're going to plug in that conversion we just saw. One calorie is 4.184 joules. Multiplying that, you get 225 joules. So going to try the next one. You should have put 2,634 calories. Plug your conversion in. And if you solved that correctly, you should have got 11,021 joules. Pause the iPod and try these two on your own. Okay, so 323 joules converted to calories should give you 72 or 77.2 calories. And then converting 25,575 calories to kilojoules, it's going to be one extra step. Convert it to joules, and then remember that there's a thousand joules in a kilojoule. And so you get 107 kilojoules. Specific heat capacity, which is represented CP, is the energy required to raise the temperature of one gram of a substance by one degree Celsius. The units of specific heat capacity are joules per degree Celsius times grams or calorie per degree Celsius times grams. And you're going to use joules or calories depending on what your energy is in. The higher the specific heat capacity, the more energy it's going to take to change a substance's temperature. Water has a very high specific heat capacity, so it takes a lot of energy to heat it. Make sure that you know water specific heat. That's the only one you have to have memorized. It's easy since it's the same as your conversion you just learned. One calorie per gram degree Celsius or 4.184 joules grams degree Celsius. Make sure that you know your equation Q equals MCAT to calculate the amount of heat gained or lost in a substance. Q is the amount of heat or gained or lost and that's in joules or calories. And you can even see it in kilocalories or kilojoules. M is mass, delta T is your change in temperature and specific heat, you're going to use whichever one is aligned with your Q. So to solve this one, we're trying to find out how much heat is required. So we're going to need to use the equation we just learned. 
and figure out your variables. Q was heat. It says how much heat, so we don't know that. M is mass, and that was given in the problem, 530 grams. C or CP, we're dealing with water, so we're going to use 4.184 joules, grams, degrees Celsius. Technically, the problem didn't say if they wanted their unit in calories or joules, so we could have used one calorie gram degree Celsius. On the test, it'd be specific. And your change in temperature, you want to be a positive number. So we're going to do 60.7 minus 47.3, which gives us 13.4. We can plug all of this into our equation now and solve for Q. All of our units should cancel out, leaving us with the units of joules. And we have 29,715 joules. So looking at this one, try to pull out your variables. So our Q this time is 25,000 joules. M is mass, and that's what we're trying to calculate. C or CP, we're dealing with water again. So I'm going to use 4.184 joules, grams degree Celsius, since we have joules already given. And the change in temperature again we want bigger minus smaller to give us a positive number. And so we get 19.8. We can plug it all in. And so mass is equal to 301.8 grams. Pause the iPod and try this one on your own. Restart it when you think you have it. So the answer you should have got was 61.7 degrees Celsius. If you got that, then you can fast forward and try the next one on your own. If you didn't, um, keep playing and see where you messed up. So your Q should have been 31,000 joules. Mass is 120 grams. Our CP, again, 4.184 joules, gram degree Celsius. And delta T is what we're looking for. So we plug it in, solving for delta T is how we get 61.7. Try this one on your own, and again, restart when you think you have the answer. Your answer should have been 7.35 joules, grams, degrees Celsius. If you got that, then you are good and you can stop the iPod. Make sure that your units are correct. If you didn't get that, then let's see where you messed up. We've got to use our MCAT equation. They gave us Q, 27,500 joules. Mass was given 45 grams. We're calculating CP.
And delta T, 98.6 minus 15.4 gives us 83.2. Plugging that all in and solving for C or CP, we get 7.35. Because heat was in joules, our units had to be joules gram degrees Celsius.